Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick. Uh, this is another episode of Riding with Rick. Uh, this is where we talk about current events, stuff that's in the news that is in some way relevant to the black community. Uh, a, little, a little less lighter uh, than some of the heavy stuff going on with mental illness, uh, racial wealth gap. Uh, all the other stuff that I have been so heavily engaged in providing solutions to, but still relevant information that provides context to a lot of things that are often presented out of context. And to kind of have some light conversation and uh, get into things that make you think. Okay, before I get started, remember we still are in the midst of a fundraising push. If you believe in the work I do, um, whether it's in the community, whether it's Black Man Lead, whether it's Restoring Ghetto Scott for Daughters, where we work with um, black women that are suffering from uh, childhood sexual abuse, incest, all the way up to domestic violence, intimate partner violence, and on. Uh, any of that, my research center, the work I've done in research and program development. If you believe in it, show some love, show some, show some support, look in the description box, make it happen. All right, hey. I got two things I'm going to talk to you today about. Uh, former wide receiver from the University of Alabama, played with the Raiders, uh, Henry Ruggs, uh, was sentenced today. I'm going to talk to you about that last. What I want to talk to you about first is I, I tried to let it slide, but I can't. So here we go. I might not have a channel tomorrow, but I'm going to call a spade a spade. It turns out that the it's being pushed as an LGBTQ against Neo thing. But let me tell you something, that's not what's really happening. What's really happening is a subsector of the LGBTQ community that the LGBTQ community isn't even happy with right now is using the umbrella of the LGBTQ community to leverage and bully people. And that's uh, the transgender uh, push where there's this push into uh, I identify as and I'm going to move you out of your space type thing. Uh, I have been very vocal on this. This isn't about hatred. This isn't about a phobia. I don't fear anybody. I love my gay brothers and sisters, my transgender brothers and sisters, those who are still trying to figure it out, brothers and sisters. I love every la last one of you, but I have a right to have a stand on something and have a reason in believing in it. Uh, as Dave Chappelle said, and I 100% agree with it, uh, I don't have to abandon my convictions to show compassion and to show love, to extend love, and to stand with you. I don't have to do that. And there's nobody I'm going to agree with in 100%. And the idea that I could bully somebody into taking my stance or being canceled or being uh, fired or what, whatever the situation is, uh, this isn't about hate. This isn't about telling somebody to attack somebody because of that. They have a right to feel how they feel, but you don't have a right to invade someone else's space and demand that they redefine themselves so that you feel comfortable where you're at first and foremost. If you want to identify as a female, do it all you want to, but you cannot change who a woman is. That's the first thing. That's going to piss a bunch of people off. really don't care. Uh, be who you are. My thing is, it doesn't require me to accept it. The moment that you are requiring somebody else validate it says there's a problem in the first place. There's no other place where we're talking about true self-esteem, true self-worth, true, true self-image, where we're saying, now everybody has to agree with you for it to be real. Nobody has to accept who I am for me to be who I am. Nobody has to validate it. Nobody has to co-sign it. The idea that I would demand it says that I'm not 100% sure of myself. Now that's that would be the diagnosis or diagnosis or the assessment any place else but except in this place where if you don't do this it's because you hate me and no I don't hate you you hate you and you don't understand why and then there's a whole society and culture pushing something on you so forcefully that you don't know what to do with it and I'm not sitting up marginalizing, dismissing anybody's experience. This isn't an assault on my gay brothers and sisters or family members for that matter. This is me sitting up and saying you don't get to push other people around. Now, from what I understand, Neo came on and said basically that he did not agree with 
parents getting their children sex traded. I don't even think that should be legal. As a person who specializes in human behavior, human development, and understanding what children go to and how long it takes for the brain to fully develop and to be able to mature to make decisions. Um, we don't make good decisions many times as adults. Matter of fact, the entire uh, retail market is built around being able to push our emotional triggers and get us to make decisions and buying decisions that aren't actually good for us. So that's something as simple as a buying decision. What makes you think that a minor child has the capacity to make a decision on something that is going to have such an immense impact and so many different implications across the course of their life at that age? This isn't saying they don't have a right to choose what they want to be. They should be able to choose what they want to be when they're old enough to be able to measure the ramifications of their decision they should be able to sit up and say this is what i want to do this is what comes with it we're not looking at the high uh suicide rate from the people in this community and it's not because they're being bullied that's a part of it the negative stigma and all the stuff that goes that's a part of it but that's not the totality of it the uncertainty of identity brings up with it a problem and to sit up and say this is who i am and still struggle because what I'm telling you when you know who you are nobody has to co-sign it nobody needs to say yeah that's who you are and it's okay to be that and be good now it's good to have that I'm not saying that it doesn't serve a role I'm not saying that having what you believe in and stand for and want to really truly be be enforced by others especially those you love doesn't have power and force absolutely does what I'm saying is when you truly know who you are you don't need one person to tell you so then if you don't know who you are, that's one of the problems we're having within the black community in totality is a lack of true understanding of identity. We lack our identity. We're in the middle of an identity crisis, a collective identity crisis, which is why we're easily manipulated. I shared uh, an updated article that I literally basically rewrote almost uh, today to talking about the attack on uh black masculinity and the attack on black manhood and the need to defend black masculinity because when we don't know who we are we will let them define us we'll let them tell us that masculinity can be toxic no the fuck it can't masculinity cannot be toxic masculinity by its very definition is the opposite of toxic masculinity by its very definition protects covers provides leads and empowers that's what masculinity does I hope y'all didn't see me shoot that. That was my uh, one of my cigar brothers. Uh, he, he made me have to send him the finger because he was talking noise and sending the finger to me. It's all but love. Uh, uh, and, um, but anyway, I hope y'all didn't see that. But I'm him with that. I act up at times. Especially when I get around my boys. But anyway, so that's that. So, Neo, now here's a beautiful thing. Neo's publicist comes out, PR people come out, and they immediately issue a statement and says, Neo apologized or whatever. Neo goes on Instagram and says, no, the F I didn't. I, I said what I said. And big ups to him because that's one of the things that they've done. They've bullied people with pulpits, people with platforms into acquiescing to either say, I stand with you, or, you know, like Malik Yoba and all that bull, or just shut up, don't say nothing about it, leave them people alone. My thing is, I absolutely love you. I, we can sit down, we can talk, we go hang out, we have dinner. I have absolutely no problem with that. We can sit down and I can accept you for who you are, but I don't have to say I agree with it. That's what this humanity is about. Humanity, what we've damn near fought since we've been in this country, say, hey, look, man, I'm black, this is who I am. Accept me. You don't have to like me, but accept me. Respect me. Don't mistreat me. Don't mishandle me. I'm not about mistreating anybody. I'm not being about harming anybody. I'm not talking to, talking dirty or nasty or mean towards anybody. I'm about saying, hey, you're who you are. I accept you. I love you. I extend compassion to you. If you ever need me, call me. But if you ask me, do I agree with your lifestyle? I'm going to say no. I will sit down and I will listen to you explain it to me. And I will give you my rebuttal to it. And we can take it from there. I have done years and years of scientific research on this. This isn't something that I'm just sitting up saying. It has absolutely very little to do with my religious affiliation. And I don't even consider myself to be religious. I'm a very, very 
uh, spiritual and God connected person. I believe in God. I consider myself to be very, very connected to the Christ, but not in the way that the average religious Christian is. You know, Christianity to me, uh, never mind, we're not gonna get into that. But anyway, the bottom line is, again, I can love you. I can extend compassion to you. I don't have to agree with everything you do to, in order to do it. I don't have to abandon my conviction. I don't have to abandon my stance. And when I see what it's doing, especially to black men, I can sit up and say, hey, look, I'm not with that. I don't like how it's manhandling black women. You're going to push them out of a space that they occupy. They are the original woman. And you're going to push them out of space and give them a label to their womanhood? No, they're women. Not cis women, not uh, bi, not birth, birth, bi, whatever. They're women. Now, how you want to identify is your business. How you want to place yourself in that is your business. Some of the scientific, ridiculous stuff they're throwing out about cycles and all this other stuff that obviously anybody with common sense and understands the female 28 day cycle understands that only a person that is built and born with that. We can't even get into stuff like, uh, and see, I'm also, uh, in addition to being uh, a psychologist and understanding neurology, understanding, studying uh, epigenetics, so understanding genes and all this other stuff, I'm also by by trade and vocation. First, my first business was as a physical trainer. Have a master's in biomechanics and kinesiology. I understand bone structure. I also understand that a woman who is born female has a different pelvic bone for a specific reason. Very Nature took care of all of that. These are things that we cannot argue with. I am not here to dismiss you, make you feel smaller. I'm saying be you, do it. Well, I mean, walk it, be bold in it. If you're going to do it, be bold in it. I don't think if you believe something, you should be thwarted or held back or pushed back because somebody ain't rolling with your hell. A bunch of the stuff I've done in my life, people weren't rolling with it. People didn't believe I could do it. People thought I was crazy. I don't care. I'm going to do what I believe and stand on. I ain't telling you to sit back and say, man, I don't know why. Stop trying to move somebody and park your space and take your own space. That's yours. Make it all yours. Do your thing. That's you. Now on to Henry Ruggs. Uh, Henry Ruggs was sentenced today to three to ten years in prison. So min a minimum of three years. And three years he'll become eligible for parole. And then it'll be up to the parole board to determine whether or not he is going to be released early. Uh, if you don't remember, Henry Ruggs is the Los Angeles Raider wide receiver. Came out of the University of Alabama who was doing excess of 100 miles an hour, hit someone, their car exploded, and they burned up them and their dog, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that family has been very vehemently pushing for justice. Uh, and if it was my, my my daughter and, you know, whatever, I probably would be doing the same thing. But I wouldn't probably, I would be doing the same thing. Again, there's this thing like, man, they're being harsh. You know, they, The thing is, the judge said something that I thought was interesting. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to touch on this and I'm done. The judge said that in situations like this, consistency is important. What she was saying is just because you're a celebrity doesn't mean that you should be treated different. And this is the guideline on which I sentence in areas like this. And so she gave him what she would give anybody who came in there who killed somebody while they was drunk their first time. Uh, and that is three to ten years. Um, now, there are going to be a bunch of us that are going to go around and say, man, white people get off with it all the time. There are white people with four and five DWIs and all that. Uh, DWI versus DWI homicide or vehicular homicide while driving under the influence is completely different. Taking somebody's life. And my thing is, here's something that I want us to get away from. Here's something I want us to get away from. I want us to get away from measuring ourselves against what they do and what they get away with. We know they're morally bereft. We know they lack moral compass. We know we don't want to get, we want to live at a higher height, not just experience life better, not just experience power. We want to experience it in purity, meaning we didn't burn nobody, gaff nobody, shit on nobody to get it. That we literally sit up and we did it from the purest place possible, which is the most powerful power you can create. But if we're study trying to measure ourselves and we're saying rather than raise our standard and not do stupid shit, 
We want to just get away with the stupid shit that they get away with. We'll never rise. And this isn't me wishing anything on this brother. I'm hoping that he takes this time to get over. The thing that came out of it the most that I'm going to share and I'm going to leave with because I think it's really powerful is his teammate who is one of the top receivers in the league and, and uh, was on the Super Bowl team they lost last year was Devontae Smith. They played at Alabama together. They are best friends. He calls him his brother from another mother. He literally requested to be dismissed from training camp today so that he could be present at the sentencing and he was there. Uh, he said that's his brother and he's going to be there for him. To me, that's love. That's care. That's what we need to do. We don't throw him away. We need to allow for accountability, but we don't throw him away. We are going to have to be a strength. We've got 1.3 million men in prison. Black men. We need to start creating spaces for them to exit in a way that they walk into their power and they are not tempted to do stupid shit that takes them back. So, in essence, uh, my prayers go out to the family of the young lady who was killed. My prayers go out to the family of Henry Ruggs and uh, all the things that, you know, they're going to have to adjust to. Um, big ups and props to Devontae Smith, who stood up for his brother and went up there and, 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 and was there present with him to let him know he wasn't alone. Uh, that's extremely important in times like that. And I hope this brotherhood thing that I'm seeing start to become a thing uh, remains uh, active. There's so much we can do when we show the world we're going to stand with one another no matter what. Doesn't mean we're going to condone bad behavior. It just means that we're not abandoning our people anymore. We're going to sit up and we're going to show love. We're going to be there. So on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I thank you guys for letting me take up your time. Don't forget, if you believe in what I'm doing in the work in the community, if you don't know, click that link that takes you to the site and just check out all the stuff we have going on, the stuff we've been doing for the last 30 years. But whatever you do, give. We need your support. On that note, I'm out of here. Thank you.